My name is Christy Cousy and I teach 7th and 8th grade Family and Consumer Sciences. I'm Chelsea Meyer and I teach 7th and 8th grade Art. I'm Shane Rollins and I teach 7th and 8th grade GTD, Gateway to Technology. My name is Kevin Roney, 8th uh, grade Special Education teacher. Jared Stack, 8th grade Mathematics and we did a geometric sculpture project for project-based learning. The geometric sculpture began three or four years ago uh, with the idea that first and foremost the students were doing a project already in art class and the students were doing a different project in math class and the decision was made why not put the project together and have the students do one project that integrates the curriculum. Eighth grade math students were struggling conceptually with three-dimensional geometry so we decided to make it a hands-on project. Now the evolution of the project became a project was done each trimester. The first trimester was a math art project. The second trimester was a math family consumer science project. And the third trimester was a math gateway to technology project. So students then in art class get to design models and create using the knowledge that they've learned in Jared's class, get to create models out of the geometric background, the algebra background. Um, and then they're able to actually see those nets, which is your 2D figure flat, come in and become a 3D model. But then with the making it a public sculpture, then students have more freedom and creativity to kind of design it and create it the way they want it to be. So students are able to group up then in groups of two or three students and they designed their own geometric sculpture but depending on um, location. This year it was more specific to the middle school since we were designing for the middle school and so they used different apps to superimpose their sculpture, blow it up to scale size, show images of it at scale size and then to make it real world we brought in community experts to do a final judging. After Jared and I watched the presentations and we narrowed it down to a top nine, and after those top nine then, um, they got community feedback from people at Midwest Molding, Terex, art folks that are part of the Waverly Chamber of Commerce, um, and they were able to, and even administrators came in, and we were able to give the students um, more feedback as well as get feedback from the experts on what made the designs work or not work, and then we narrowed it down to a top three. In mathematics, the critical content was two-dimensional and three-dimensional geometry. The students were given permission to approximate the amount of materials, the surface area, it was going to take to build, and they were supposed to also approximate the space, which is the volume, that uh, these solids would take up once the final sculpture was made. During the second trimester, I came on board with the Family and Consumer Science Connection and math to the Geometric Sculpture Project. My piece in the puzzle was to um, work with the students. They regrouped and redesigned the sculptures that were narrowed down to three uh, possibilities. The students were challenged with researching the cost to build the sculpture. They had to do some research, contact local vendors for steel and other building materials. We focused on communication skills as they presented their redesigned projects again and then ultimately the cost to build the sculpture. Brian Benham offered a fantastic connection between the middle school and the high school getting our kids interested in his future uh, courses at the high school. And during the presentations, he added another voice of the realistic uh, possibilities of the creations, asking the right questions, and also served as an expert for our students in that design phase. During the third trimester, the third phase of the project, students took on the challenge of uh, taking all the criteria and constraints established in the first two phases. Um, to actually make the 3D model on the computers using Autodesk Inventor. Um, following the criteria and constraints, they created the working drawings that, were, that we prepared and uh, were sent to the high school for Brian Benham to use um, for, their, for their students there to go ahead and uh, um, create the project or go ahead and fabricate the project. During the second trimester of the project, the students were challenged with 
thinking outside of the box and looking for community partners to help finance the project, seeking donations from family members or community partners. That was a key piece to um, seeing our project to completion was being able to find the funding to actually design, build, and display our geometric sculpture. By about the fourth week of school, we were able to sit down with our group of students, about 110 students, and say to them, we're going to build a sculpture. And by the end of this school year, come May, you guys are going to help us design, redesign, construct, and build a sculpture. And it's going to be on the property, and it's going to represent your class. It's going to have some specific names on it, and we've got some money to get it started, and we'll find a way to make sure we finish. And we made that promise to kids, and it's really going to happen. The nice thing about the project is we have PLC time within our district where we have a chance to get together for an hour a week on Wednesdays. For us it was good because we don't have a time where all five of us can get together and talk about the project. That PLC time gives us an opportunity to talk about the project together, to keep moving forward with it. Uh, thankfully we had a head start in years past with some initial framework or initial starting points with the project. Having that foundation and then having the additional PLC, PLC time this year uh, really allowed us to take off and, and do some pretty neat things with the project. With respect to project-based learning, uh, the goal is to make it real world, authentic, uh, scary, challenging. Uh, you're going to fail, some people are going to fail, that's real world. And, uh, and for us to actually carry it out, to bring in outsiders, to judge, to make suggestions, to, to make it something the student, students got nervous about, that, that made it real. And I can't do what Christy does. I don't have the connections in the community. So I needed that time to meet and say, okay, I know it has to happen. How are we, meaning her, how is she gonna make it happen? I can't do what Shane does. I trust that he's gonna do his part and the kids are gonna be successful. I don't wanna do Chelsea's part. And, and so it really boils down to, I feel like I'm the math expert, but I need to be able to rely on other people like Brian Benham at the high school who really knows what can really happen because he's really built it before. Jared and I have worked for the past couple years on a different project connecting family consumer science curriculum and math content together. And I think the value of this project with it being the entire school year going from art to FCS to gateway to technology and, and infusing the math content in our subject areas outweighed the um, the time that was maybe spent on this project versus the project that we had done in the past. There's value in this type of project and it'll be fun to see the kids when the product is actually displayed. Their reaction will be outstanding.